Rising from the depths of bedrock, through steel and sweat, the World Trade Center became more than just towers. This is the story of how the Twin Towers were built, a feat of engineering that reached new heights, changing the city and the world forever. Construction officially began in 1966. A key challenge was the site's proximity to the Hudson River. To prevent flooding, a massive slurry wall was built around the foundation. Trenches were filled with a bentonite slurry to prevent collapse before concrete was poured to form the walls. Millions of cubic yards of soil and rock were excavated from the site. This material was later used to create Battery Park City, a new neighborhood near the site. After the excavation, the foundation was constructed using caissons and piles that extended deep into bedrock, ensuring the towers could support their immense weight. At the base of the towers, a steel grillage system was installed to distribute the load of the building columns across the bedrock. Each tower weighed approximately 500,000 tons, so the foundation needed to efficiently distribute this weight across the bedrock. The grillage consisted of large steel I-beams arranged in a grid pattern. This system helped spread the immense loads of the towers evenly over the foundation. Large concrete footings were poured directly on the bedrock, providing additional stability and support. These footings were connected to the steel grillage and served as the primary interface between the building structure and the bedrock. The core columns of the twin towers were anchored into the bedrock with massive concrete footings. The core structure housed elevators, stairwells, and utilities. The core was constructed using 47 massive steel columns that were connected to the foundation and provided the backbone of the building. The perimeter columns, which formed a dense grid around the exterior of the buildings, were also connected to the foundation system. The lowest basement level was primarily used for housing vital mechanical equipment and utilities that supported the operation of the towers, including electrical systems, water pumps, and HVAC systems. Level B5 contained more mechanical systems, storage areas, and utility infrastructure. Moving upward, levels B2 to B4 were primarily used for parking garages, as well as storage and mechanical rooms. The parking facilities were essential for tenants and visitors, providing space for hundreds of vehicles. At the highest basement level is Level B1, housed the underground concourse, which included a shopping mall with numerous retail stores and access to the towers, as well as connections to the PATH train station, subway lines, and other underground transit options. The ground level housed the main entrances to the North and South Towers. The perimeter columns of the towers, visible from the ground level, defined the exteriors, creating a sleek, vertical appearance. The ground floor columns were heavier and larger than those higher up because they had to bear more load. The size and thickness of the columns tapered as they ascended the tower due to the decreasing load.
Near the base of the towers, the perimeter columns split into a distinctive trident shape. This was particularly visible in the lobby area and at the entrance to the towers, where the columns branched into three prongs, creating an arch-like aesthetic. The next floor is at level 7 to 8. This level was primarily a mechanical floor dedicated to housing essential building systems such as HVAC, electrical, and fire safety equipment. Other mechanical floors were at level 41 to 42, 75 to 76 and 108 to 109. It was not accessible to the public or used for office space but was a crucial part of the building's infrastructure. On top of it is level 9. There were 236 perimeter columns around each floor, forming a rectangular grid with 59 modules on each side. The perimeter column was made up of prefabricated modular panels. Each module consisted of three vertical perimeter columns, connected by spandrel plates. The spandrel's plates were attached to the floor trusses, which extended between the perimeter columns and the core of the building. These panels were pre-assembled off-site, with the maximum of 11 meters high and 3 meters wide extended for two floors and three floors. The central core columns supported the vertical loads of the building. Together with the perimeter columns, they created a tube within a tube system that allowed for large, open floor plans without the need for internal support columns. Prefabricated steel floor trusses were used to connect the perimeter columns to the core columns. The floor trusses were long, lightweight steel trusses that spanned the distance between the perimeter columns and the core columns. These trusses supported the concrete floor slabs and allowed for the large, open floor plans that characterized the towers. The design concept allowed the twin towers to have a nearly column-free interior on each floor. This provided tenants with maximum flexibility in configuring office spaces and improved the aesthetic appeal by creating wide, open spaces. The floor slabs were made of lightweight concrete poured on top of a steel deck that acted as a base. The decking was supported by the floor trusses and helped hold the concrete in place during and after the pouring process. This lightweight concrete was typically about 4 inches thick and reinforced with wire mesh to improve its tensile strength and durability. Levels 9 to 40 were dedicated to commercial office space, characterized by large, open floor plans, ample natural light from the perimeter windows, and modern mechanical systems. These floors were part of the tower's primary function as business centers, housing a variety of companies and providing a comfortable working environment with integrated safety and fireproofing features. At level 41, there is a mechanical floor. They contributed to the overall strength and stability of the buildings by reinforcing the core and exterior framing. These levels were equipped with additional steel framing and supports to accommodate the weight and function of the heavy mechanical equipment housed on the floor. Moving upwards to the top there are more office space, like the lower floors, with companies and institutions leasing various floors depending on their size and needs. The roof trusses were integrated into the building's overall tube structure design, meaning that they worked in tandem with the perimeter columns and core columns. The roof trusses connected to both the perimeter and core, providing structural redundancy and ensuring that loads from the roof were shared by both systems.
The fireproofing system is designed to protect the steel structure from the effects of high heat and fire. The primary method of fireproofing used in the towers was sprayed on fireproofing insulation. This material, typically composed of mineral fibers, gypsum, and other insulating materials, was applied to the steel components, including the core columns, perimeter columns, and floor trusses. However, the events of September 11, 2001, revealed vulnerabilities in this system, particularly with the impact of the airplanes and the ensuing fires. The reflective surface of the Twin Towers was a key element of their architectural design, serving both aesthetic and practical purposes. This surface was created using aluminum alloy cladding that covered the tower's steel perimeter columns, giving the buildings their signature silvery appearance. The most prominent feature on the roof of the tower was the massive television and radio antenna. The antenna, often referred to as a broadcast mast, was installed on the roof of the North Tower in 1979, seven years after the tower was officially completed. The primary purpose of the antenna was to broadcast television and radio signals. Its installation made the World Trade Center a central broadcasting hub for the New York City area, hosting antennas for multiple television and radio stations. The original World Trade Center complex, including the Twin Towers, was completed between 1972 and 1973. The North Tower was finished first in 1972, followed by the South Tower in 1973. The formal dedication ceremony for the entire complex occurred on April 4, 1973. These iconic towers stood as the tallest buildings in the world at the time of their completion, and remained symbols of modern engineering and economic might, until their destruction in the September 11, 2001 attacks. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.